What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about this insane $285,000 Toyota Tacoma truck house. All right, so let's get into it. So today I just woke up like any normal day scrolling through my Instagram feed and I see this insane looking concept of a Toyota Tacoma with like this giant camper looking thing on the back of it and I was like man that is a really cool concept but there's no way anyone's making that well lo and behold this company truck house is actually going to make this thing and it honestly looks like incredible so what I've gathered from it just from the pictures is it's literally a Toyota Tacoma kind of almost like with the back cut off and then a giant camper. And the first thing that popped into my mind was the old mid 1980s Toyota Sun Raiders. And if you don't know what a Sun Raider is, I'll pop a picture up on the screen. It's essentially the exact same thing, a Tacoma, or I guess back then it was just like the Toyota truck with a giant camper on the back. So this thing immediately piqued my interest and I had to go check it out a little bit more. So I went to the truck house Instagram page and they only have like four pictures of it. And I guess they just released it today. So that's why it's coming out. And that's why I'm making this video. I know this video is a little bit different for my channel, but I would greatly appreciate it if you slap that like button, if you like the video and make sure to hit that subscribe button as well, if you haven't already. But anyway, let's get into this truck. So looking at the website here, you go to truckhouse.co and you're immediately greeted with the renderings that they post on Instagram. So you get like a front three quarters view and a rear three quarters view. And at the top, you have two buttons, the BCT exterior and interior options. And all those buttons do is just take you down the page, which we're going to scroll down anyway. All right. So scrolling down here, you get this nice little picture and they're introducing the BCT truck houses first production model. So we'll get that out of the way. There are other companies that make trucks like this, usually they're done with like a Ford F-250, 350, you know, like the full size one ton trucks. I don't think I've ever seen a company actually, you know, intentionally use a smaller platform like the Toyota Tacoma. Usually they use those bigger trucks because they have a higher towing capacity, payload, you know, the whole nine. So it's really interesting to see them do this on a Toyota Tacoma. But if you know anything about the Toyota Tacoma, you know it is one of the best off-road platforms. So it's no surprise that they would want to go ahead and do this with a Tacoma. So one thing I just want to note is that they call it the BCT. Uh, they don't really explain anywhere on the website that I've seen what that actually stands for. Except for this little paragraph right here maybe gives you a clue. It says, with a cabin built like a yacht and a chassis rugged enough for true backcountry travel. So my assumption is that BCT stands for backcountry travel. Uh, that would make sense. I don't know. Otherwise, if I find out, maybe I'll drop a comment below and update you guys on that. Um, but if you guys find out, or if you think I'm wrong, drop a comment below, let me know because I don't see anywhere what the name stands for. All right. So scrolling down again on the website, it kind of shows a little bit of the feature set, I guess a little bit, uh, just a few paragraphs explaining some stuff. So like it says here, we have long travel suspension. I'll talk about that more in a second because that's very interesting. Composite construction and that it's built for longevity and durability. Uh, but all of these buttons, all of these sections lead to the same page. But anyway, scrolling down a little bit more. Oh, there's the picture of the Sun Raider that I was talking about. So it looks like they definitely use the Sun Raider as a guide for this new Toyota Tacoma BCT which I think is awesome. As you can see, the Sun Raider was an awesome truck and everybody's really sad that they stopped making them. So it's nice of a company to try to bring that back to life. All right, so at the end of the page here, we'll scroll back up and click into the see the BCT page and you're greeted with this picture. So this picture to me is pretty interesting. Uh, the other two, like we saw in the beginning, are renderings. This looks a little bit more realistic, right? But I think what they did here is they have a Toyota Tacoma that's built out and then they just kind of photoshopped the actual like house portion on the back. I could be wrong. This could be a real picture, but based on the renderings and some other photos I've seen, 
I think this is Photoshop, which is fine. I'm sure, you know, it's a real product and they're going to release it at some point, but it'll be nice to see the actual pictures of the thing, especially the interior, which they don't have yet. And we'll talk about that in a second. But scrolling down here, we see some key specifications of the BCT. So I want to spend a minute talking about this because the specs are pretty interesting and I'm going to draw some parallels between the BCT here, the Truckhouse BCT, and a stock Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. So as far as length, it's a little bit longer. Height, obviously a lot taller. Uh, width as well, wider because you have that big truck on the back. But here's where it gets interesting. So interior standing height is six foot three inches and a half. So for all of my six foot four and above kings out there, sorry, you're going to have to be ducking your head to get in this, but I'm sure it'll still be comfortable. And I don't think there are many trucks on the market that are tall enough to accommodate a six foot four person. And then we get right into it with the ground clearance at the rear diff is 11 inches. That's about two inches taller than a stock Toyo Tacoma TRD Pro. So that's a pretty good stat upgrade there as well as the approach angle, as well as the approach angle. So here, this approach angle is actually kind of insane. I believe the stock Tacoma approach angle is like 29 degrees. This is showing as 39.5 degrees, which is quite a big increase. That's like Jeep level approach angle right there. Honestly, I think that can be attributed to the bumper that they have on the truck. It looks like they have a low profile bumper with the wings on it, uh, similar to like an SSO slimline stage two bumper. So it's a good looking bumper and it looks like it gives it a lot of extra approach angle there. Departure angle, quite the opposite. Uh, this is kind of expected with a giant house on the back of the truck, but it's 19.5 degrees. And that's compared to the stock Tacoma's 23 degree departure angle. However, it's honestly kind of nice that you're only losing like three or four degrees there. So that's actually pretty good for a truck like this um and then the other few stats here we're not going to really talk about except for the fuel capacity so the bct has a larger fuel tank a significantly larger fuel tank of 33 gallons compared to the stock tacoma fuel tank which is only 21 gallons and it's super frustrating because i'm constantly refilling my tank and the gas mileage isn't that great to begin with, so I'm always at the fuel pump. So it'll be nice to have those extra 12 gallons of fuel, even though this probably gets terrible gas mileage. All right, and then on to the exterior specs here. Uh, just reading down, Expedition Long Travel Suspension, we already saw that. Uh, drilled and slotted disc brakes, front and rear. So that's interesting. If you know about Tacomas, you know they get smashed all the time for having the rear drum brakes. It's a pretty nice upgrade for them to switch out the rear and the front for some slotted disc brakes. Because of that, I wouldn't worry about this thing stopping on a highway, on a mountain, going downhill. And then it says fully fabricated rear axle. So that's pretty interesting to me. Uh, to me, in my mind, that means that they have switched out the stock Tacoma axle and basically put in a new one that they fabricated themselves. That would make a lot of sense because that stock Tacoma axle isn't going to hold all the weight of this house on the back that well. So that's probably a pretty good thing that they switched that out. And then we start getting into the optional stuff, the stuff with the little asterisk at the top that you only get if you upgrade. And the first one on that list is the high clearance front bumper. So that's pretty interesting because we were just talking about the approach angle and how good it was, but I can guarantee that that approach angle is only that good because of that bumper. So if you get the base model, which is the $285,000 model, you're not going to be getting that high clearance front bumper and you won't have that 39.5 degree awesome approach angle. In addition to that, the Safari snorkel recovery ladders and off-road accessory lighting are all part of the upgraded packages as well. One of the nice things is with the base model, you will be getting those rotary forged wheels. Um, they kind of look like method wheels to me. I guess we'll find out a little bit more as more information about this comes out. And then some specs about the house. It says multi-access gear storage, torsion-free mounting system, an automatic awning, low profile rooftop solar array, three point locking entry door and electric entry step. And then another option is a 10 speaker weatherproof soundbar. So while we're on this page, I wanted to go through these pictures because 
it will bring me back to a point I made earlier about the renderings. So uh, as you can see, these first two pictures are renderings. It's pretty clear. Um, you know, they're not really trying to fool anybody here with these renderings. Uh, this is the one that I thought was a little bit up in the air. Um, and that's because the truck looks very realistic and so does the camper part to be fair. But if you go through the rest of their pictures here, they're all very close up shots of the truck and none of them include the camper. So I'm not sure if they maybe just took these pictures before they got the camper part of it finished or if, you know, they just haven't built out a camper yet and they're still using renderings. But going through these pictures, uh, there's the Tacoma. That's clearly a 2020 or 2021 Tacoma with the upgraded headlights. And then you have the high clearance bumper on it. Like I said, the 2020 headlights. And, oh, okay, so that's interesting. The wheels are actually Black Rhino, which is another pretty awesome wheel brand. Um, so that's pretty cool. Those are some solid wheels. And those things are probably indestructible, which is awesome. And it really fits this build. Moving on, these are the drilled and slotted disc brakes front and rear and then they just have one random picture of a guy in a mask who looks like he's working on some type of fiberglass or composite which i would assume is the house part on the truck and then scrolling down here to the interior so this is where it gets pretty interesting this is probably the part most people are concerned about and as you can see they do not have any interior images yet and this is just another thing that reinforces my theory that they don't actually have one of these built out yet it'll be interesting to see when those images come out and maybe i'll make a follow-up video if you guys like this video so make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment below tell me what you think but as far as the interior um, it looks pretty standard as far as you know campers are concerned you get a queen size bed and a convertible dinette you know a dinette that converts into a couch or a bed um, other than that, you have a small little bathroom, a little two burner stove and some storage and a little pantry and whatnot. So there's the uh, floor plan there and just highlighting some of the optional upgrades with the higher packages. You can get a swivel mounted 32 inch LED TV, 12 volt air conditioning. So that's really interesting. It doesn't come standard with air conditioning. My guess is if you are spending the money on a truck like this, you're going to be driving to places where you both need air conditioning and heat. So not having that as a standard option is kind of a big deal, um, especially for the amount of money that people are going to be paying for these things. So that's really interesting to me. I'm wondering how that's going to pan out for them. Uh, but in addition to that, you can get heated floors again as an option. Um, and that's the only three optional or upgraded things about the actual house itself. All right, so now on to the pricing and the different packages, probably the thing people are most interested in here. Uh, so right off the bat shows you at the top introductory base price, $285,000. Let that sink in for a second. $285,000. That's a steep price for a truck with a camper on it, um, in my opinion. That price literally lives up to the name truck house because it's gonna cost you a house to buy this thing. All right, so now that we're over the uh, price hurdle there, in addition to that, that's just the base price. So who knows how much more expensive it gets once you start tacking on those options and these different packages that we're gonna talk about in a second. All right, so the stage one for the truck is a TRD Sport access cab. So not the TRD Pro that they're showing in the pictures. So that's kind of interesting. And it's an access cab. And then the stage two is the TRD Sport double cab, again, with the premium sport package. So this is going to be, you know, those people that are traveling in more than two. And then finally, the stage three is the TRD Pro. And it has another one of those pesky little asterisks showing that you need a stage two or three off-road package, which we're gonna talk about in a second. So for the truck stages, that's really interesting. Um, the most interesting thing to me is that they're not using the TRD off-road packages. They're using the TRD sport packages. My guess for this would be that they are using those packages specifically for the hood scoop. And honestly, that's about all I could come up with. I don't know why if you're making an overland vehicle, you wouldn't even consider the TRD off-road package. 
Uh, but yeah, that's what I can come up with. Let me know what you think in the comments. All right, so moving on to the off-road part, you're gonna get 33 inch tires, a long travel suspension with upgraded rear suspension, fully fabricated rear axle, a reinforced chassis, and dual swing rear bumper. So this is interesting mainly because they reinforce the chassis. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, when companies are making these rigs, they're typically doing them on the F-250, F-350 trucks because they have like a higher payload, they're stronger, and they can hold all the weight. So for a company to come and take the Toyota Tacoma and make a truck house out of it like they're doing, they definitely need to reinforce that chassis. So that's a good thing and hopefully it holds up for them. All right, so onto the stage two, you get upgraded 35 inch tires. So a nice little jump from 33s to 35s. Long travel suspension once again in the front, but this time you get performance rear suspension as opposed to upgraded rear suspension. They obviously don't list exactly what suspension you're getting. So that's kind of interesting to me. Um, I'm assuming it's probably just gonna be like a standard shock versus maybe like a remote resi setup like Fox's or King Shocks. And just like the stage one package, fully fabricated rear axle, reinforced chassis, and the dual swing rear bumper. But with the stage two, you also get that high clearance front bumper that we were talking about, which looks like the slimline SSO bumper. So that's nice. You only have to go up to stage two to get that bumper. So in addition to the stage one stuff, you're also getting an upgraded rear locker. So that's interesting. I would assume it's some type of air locker, like an Air B air locker, as opposed to the electric one that comes on the stock trucks. You also get the auxiliary air compressor, like I said, probably like an Air B type setup, as well as a front winch, an extended fuel tank. So it appears that you are not getting that 33 gallon extended upgraded fuel tank unless you go up to the stage two. It looks like on the stage one, you'll probably be stuck with that crappy tiny 21 gallon fuel tank that comes on stock Tacomas. All right, so, so far the stage two is looking like the stage to go for, but let's check out the stage three. Uh, so still 35 inch tires, but this time you're getting trophy long travel suspension. I'm not sure exactly what they mean by that. Again, it might be just like a difference between regular coilovers versus some coilovers with remote resis or maybe some type of active suspension. I'm not really sure. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what those options actually mean. In addition to that, trophy rear suspension, fully fabricated rear axle, reinforced chassis, you get the bumper, everything else is pretty much the same except you're getting auxiliary lighting, upgraded front and rear lockers. Stage one and stage two, we didn't even have a mention of a front locker. So you're getting a front locker in the stage three, which is a pretty big thing if you're trying to do any amount of serious off-roading. And then in addition to that, you're also getting a rear winch as well as a front winch, which again could be pretty significant if you're doing some serious off-roading. And then the extended fuel tank and recovery ladders. So pretty interesting on the off-road stages there, obviously three being the most hardcore off-roading package it seems, with the stage two kind of being like a middle ground and stage one being kind of closer to stock but just with some upgraded component. All right, and then as far as entertainment, stage one, you get the great outdoors, which is a funny way, I guess, of them saying you get nothing. Uh, stage two, you get that 32 inch LED TV, house audio and house internet. Um, I'm not sure what house internet means. That's kind of interesting. Um, I guess we'll find out more about that in the future. Uh, the stage three, you get the TV, premium house audio, weatherproof soundbar, which we saw on the outside and then house internet again and a gaming system so a gaming system um that seems a little gimmicky i mean you could just bring your own gaming system so i'm sure they're kind of charging a little bit extra for that but you get one so that's interesting rear seats uh stage one you get one rear captain's chair and 60 percent storage platform Stage two, full rear storage platform, and stage three, dual rear captain's chairs. And then moving on, power up lithium battery bank for stage one with solar. Stage two, high capacity battery bank, as well as upgraded solar. And then the final section here, severe weather. Stage one, you're getting a heater. You're getting double pane glass safari windows, and you're getting blackout shades and insect screens. 
Stage two, you're getting the heater, but you're also getting air conditioning. You're getting heated floors, heated fresh and gray tanks, increased house insulation, double pane windows, and the blackout shades. You essentially need to go up to the stage two for air conditioning. I would imagine most people getting this thing are just going to opt for that stage two for the severe weather package. It is interesting that they would, you know, start with the heater as opposed to air conditioning in the stage one. You know, to me, it seems like air conditioning is like a basic necessity most people need. But I do live in Florida, so that might just be the mindset where I live, as opposed to if someone up north is buying this. It'll actually be pretty interesting as well to see if you can buy your own Tacoma, you know, go to the dealer, negotiate, and then bring them your truck to work on, as opposed to, you know, getting the truck through them where you might kind of miss those negotiations or any deals that you might get on the truck if you buy it yourself. All right, guys, so that is the Truck House BCT. It's a super interesting truck, uh, really the first of its kind with this size of a truck. And I'm really interested to see how a lot of these details kind of pan out as more information is added, especially the interior pictures. I think that's going to be huge for them to come out with that. So if you want me to do an update video when those pictures come out, let me know by dropping a comment below and hitting that like button. Um, if you don't like this video, let me know. You know, it's a little bit weird for my channel to be doing a video like this. But like I said, I was just scrolling through my feed and seeing this thing, it's awesome. And I just had to share my thoughts on it because it's really a beast and it could be really cool. However, that price tag is just something that will never leave my mind. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will catch you in the next one.